So starch is basically a sugar that is a repeating unit. So something like this. Oh, she Yay. brought props. Yeah. The organic chemist comes out. Okay, someone was prepared <laughs> and she thought, oh, okay. <laughs> Hey folks, we're back for another episode of Chemist in the Kitchen, and today we're gonna to do a fry episode. And we're gonna do three types of frying. We're gonna do uh, deep fry, pan fry, and air fry. Nice. And Julie and Daisy and I are gonna try three different types of food to see what the outcome is gonna look like. I'm Julie Pollock, and I am Associate Professor of Chemistry at the University of Virginia. Hi, my name is Adrian. I'm a physical chemist, and I work for a medical device company. Hi, I'm Daisy versus Vargas. I am an organic chemist, and currently I am a science educator and communicator. This is actually my very first time deep frying anything. <laughs> Yay! And I thought I'd save it. <laughs> I thought this would be a good adventure to share with everybody. Today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do fried okra. Uh, fried okra is um, interesting because okra has kind of this uh, mucusy layer that uh, it secretes uh, when it heats up and cooks. For uh, my fried okra recipe, I was doing something a little bit Indian inspired. So taking uh, chickpea flour, which is the starch that I'm using, a little combination of rice flour, maybe some semolina flour. And the differences between these starches, as uh, Daisy was talking about, is the amylose content. And the amylose content is the thing that will drive the crispiness uh, that we're, we're interested in in terms of texture. Uh, I'm going to be testing out frying with potatoes. So I chose a russet potato. They are the best potato to do french fries apparently. They are high in starch and low in moisture. So each of these little black dots represents a sugar. Um, and when the sugars are all linked up like this, we have a starch. And so the starch found in potatoes is amylose. And it is this starch at the surface of my actual potato um, that I want to get crispy. And there is less moisture to allow for that crispiness to happen once it begins the frying process. I'm doing chicken. So I have um, bone in, skin on chicken thighs. So I have the skin there that's gonna help as well as a little bit of fat that's actually in the chicken itself. So first what I did is I actually grind my chicken in pickle juice. The pickle juice is just basically a solution of salt water. So what is the salt actually doing? Yeah, so the salt is actually starting to break down the protein a little bit. That salt, uh, the sodium and the chloride actually get in and start interacting with the protein itself to break it down, as well as it allows the chicken to, or whatever protein you're brining in, to actually soak up more water so that you have that water and the moisture in the protein um, so that as you're heating it that not all of the moisture escapes when you're frying um, it escapes from the outside so that you can get that crisp but that the inside stays very moist I'm using buttermilk instead of regular milk in order to do my seasoning because it adds imparts a little bit of flavor also because it's acidic so it is acidic, which helps in breaking down the proteins as well um, as allowing it to be able to have a surface so that it can stick onto, uh, so that the flour can stick onto the chicken itself. I am drying my potatoes. So they're really cool to the touch, um, but I wanna get rid of that moisture on the surface so I can get that crispiness to occur. I don't know what I'm doing right now. Uh, the batter that I have is relatively thick. Can somebody tell me the consistency of your batter? <laughs> with my air fryer, I'm gonna be um, spraying with canola oil spray into the bottom of the air fryer itself here to get a little bit of oil there. The temperature is 380 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little bit hotter than the oil that I'm using for the uh, meat fry. All right, so it's in there. It is, you can see the moisture coming off of it beautifully. And actually this temperature is probably decreasing a little bit uh, from the 350 that I was at before. Still up there at a perfect temperature. That's looking great. We need a little bit of oil to for pan frying um, in order to make a good connection with the surface. All right, so I'm gonna turn on this one, get that warm, and then I'm gonna throw in my last piece of chicken and see if we can get it cooked pan fried or not. <laughs> so you can still see a little bit of water coming off as it's bubbling around the bottom. 
but not nearly as much as what was happening with the deep fry. So I started, I started frying and the temperature dropped significantly. All right, I'm gonna give it a shot. So I'm gonna put this okra in there. Ah. How's it looking, Adrian? Uh, pretty good. I, yeah, this looks great. Is your, how are your french fries smelling? Um, they're smelling good. I don't know how to explain it, but it's definitely not just canola oil. Maybe it's like the cornstarch. It seems like obviously there's like chemical reactions happening. And I Car did a little- Caramelization. Yes, pyrolysis, which is like thermal decomposition. So because all of those molecules on the outer layer of the potato are basically with the heat, they are vibrating. And so vibrating causes heat. Wow. And so a lot of the molecules that are on the surface are transforming into something else. And apparently with French fries, they turn into something called aldehydes. Aldehydes just smell generally really good. Let's see, let's see your, can we see your product? Yeah, I think this of is- Of the good. deep fry? Cause I feel like the okra is the fastest. Oh, oh yeah. Very small. Yeah. I cut them up oh. because uh, I was afraid if I cook them whole, but I, I can try a whole one and see what happens that way too. I think my french fries are done. <laughs> so I'm currently brewing things over here. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try the air fry. This one I don't think is gonna work at all. <laughs> I already took my french fries out. I coated them. It's crunchy on the outside. Is it cooked all the way through? Yeah. Mm, yes. <laughs> all right, I'll try this fried okra. Wow. I did it. it. Needs salt, but I did it. So those are the main things that are different, right? Between these three methods of frying is the type of heat transfer that's actually there. So um, the similarity actually of the air fryer and the deep fry are actually fairly similar to one another. They're both a convection way of cooking something. So that means that the media that you're in, the medium that you're using to heat it up in is moving around the food that you're trying to cook. Pan frying actually is, is a little bit different because it's conduction instead. So it's direct contact with the heat, um, but putting a little bit of oil into your pan for pan frying is important um, because it, I, you wanna make sure that the uneven surface of the food is able to touch everywhere so the heat can be transferred directly from the surface um, into the food that you're actually cooking. The trick is, is not to get the oil soaked into the food, right? The oil is just a medium for heat transfer. And one of the things I was kind of doing some homework here is <clears throat> if you leave in something to fry too long, right, it gets, becomes oil rich. Uh, like the food becomes really oily and like saturated. And one of the things that happens is that um, as you fry this batter, it starts to um, become more porous. Uh, and the structure of it becomes, allows for oil molecules to actually go into the food more than it was when you first did the initial fry. Uh, so that's why if you leave it in too long, uh, the structure of the batter changes that allows for um, oil transfer into the food. So I, I got the fry, the, the pan fry. Actually, I think it did work. Uh, it ended Ooh. up making these like, yeah, these actually look much better. They look oh, nice look brown. Yeah. So my air fry french fries are done. So I definitely have to tamper down the cornstarch kind of like on the outside. Because we extracted some of that heat, I feel like I can feel those pocket holes that we created and they're expanded. It almost feels like loose skin oh, <laughs> around my potato. This is my air fry right here. This is my air fry. Again, some of the oh. breading came off, but it's actually pretty crispy. This is the deep fry. Oh, Ooh, so you can tell pretty. I picked the biggest one to so deep fry pretty. because I had a feeling it was gonna be the biggest, the best tasty one. And then this is the pan fry. And I'm not gonna lie, it's surprisingly better than I thought I was going to. And the temperature seems okay. Uh, except for if I look at this side. Which oh, turn it over, more, it's okay. Turn we're it on over. this side. This is, this is less crispy. This is, the deep fry is by far the crispiest, but the air fry is pretty crispy too, you guys. It's not bad. So I did the air fry. How's that? I don't think I have the right air fryer. This is not, this didn't really work. Uh, there's a crispy shell, but the center is all gooey and uh, soft, unlike the other ones, which have like this better bite to it. In terms of what I like, the flavor of the inside of the chicken, the air fry might be my favorite because I can taste the pickled brine. 
Deep fried tastes really, really good. The pan fry is surprisingly good, but the breading is disgusting. Actually, I ran a, con a different control, so technically I've actually cooked things four different ways. <gasps> oh, what? wait a minute. Cheated. Oh, okay, not four different ways. Oh, for a cheater. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, as in three things, I added the cornstarch, like just to give it that extra crispiness, and then one with no cornstarch. Okay. That's what I mean. I have all four. I have done pan frying. Ooh, look at that pretty plate. I love it. Oh, yeah. Uh, here is deep fry. Oh, those look delicious. Yeah. And so the extra color is, I think, from the seasoning that I did, the chipotle okay. paprika. So this is with a cornstarch at the end. So I did lack that crispiness. This one here is cornstarch coating in the air fryer. Not crispy at all. Uh, here is pan fry. Also flimsy. In very flimsy. Yeah. <laughs> Very soft interior, but still firm. And then finally, deep fry, no cornstarch uh -huh. at the top. I think it's it's the best. Oh my gosh, it's oh really my gosh. good. <laughs> that, looks good. That, does, that does look good. That looks good. Yay! Good job, Daisy. Daisy, why don't you go first and rank what you what you think about yours? Deep fry without cornstarch. Best. Top. Without cornstarch. Best. Okay. The worst. I think air fryer with cornstarch. Mm. I actually, the pan fry with cornstarch, I think is honestly better. I think the ranking that uh, pan fried actually worked really nice for this because the coating is crispy and the temperature was hot enough. I used some of the oil that I already um, heated to put into the pan itself. So I think it was at the right temperature. The worst one was the air fry. And it's just not pleasant at all. It doesn't taste good. Interesting, it doesn't taste yeah. good. And it's yeah, so I would say, I mean, deep fry by far the best. I think I would say air fry is second best um, just because the breading tasted better there. The pan fry just with the breading, just not phenomenal. So I think the consensus is that all of our heating methods cooked the inside of our protein, fruit, and vegetable. But I think what we were ranking really had to do with that outer layer. We did it. We fried. We do. do you feel? I fried. Yeah, you fried, Daisy. Congratulations. First time you fried. I didn't burn down the place. Woo. It's about the heat transfer and just getting rid of water. That, that's, the, that's the main thing that I think about and reading about and not leaving it in too long. Because if you do, it becomes oil soap. The ingredients play a role, right? So the type of starches that you use, because the amylose content will affect the way the crispiness works. And then also the smoke point of the oil that you're using. So quite more complicated than everyone else thinks it is. I mean, you just throw it in an experiment. I think this was a successful episode. There's was, there was definitely a lot going on. So and we all tried it. So <laughs> we hope that everyone enjoyed this as much as we did. Cheers. cheers. I still cheers. have some chicken left to you cheers. Can't cheers with. With a chick <laughs> you can't cheers with a chicken. Like I just, it doesn't work. <laughs>